Hey, what's up, everybody? Thank you for downloading episode 81 of We Got This with Mark and Hal. Hey, this weekend, if you're in Long Beach, California, I, Hal Lublin, will be there as well at Long Beach Comic Con. So come visit me there in what I think is called Animation Alley. It's going to be a great show. It's Saturday and Sunday down in Long Beach, California. Also, Mark and I are coming back to New York City to do a show as part of New York Super Week. It's going to be Sunday, October 9th at 6 p.m. at Hudson Mercantile. We've got John Hodgman. We've got John DiMaggio. We've got Jackson Public and Doc Hammer from Venture Brothers as guests for two back-to-back episode recordings. You get to be there for the price of one. Plus, we've got opening act Carter Parton Rogers. She's back with us again. So you can get tickets at bit.ly forward slash we got nyc that's all lowercase so go get those tickets now before they're sold out and now enjoy episode 81 of we got this with mark and hal hello i'm hal lublin and i'm mark gagliardi since the dawn of humanity one issue has gone unsettled with the fate of the world in the balance we're here to settle once and for all best vintage toy that's right. Don't worry, everyone. We got this. Podcasts should have a theme song. Podcasts should not have a theme song. Yes, they should. No, they shouldn't. They sound good. Yeah, but people are just going to skip past it. Hmm. You know what? You're right. We got this. Oh, man. Am I excited about this episode? Me too. Yeah. Not only are we talking about one of my favorite things in the world, toys. Sure. Me too. But we're doing it with one of my favorite people in the world, and I know one of your favorite people in the world, Hal. That's right. Janet Varney is joining us today. Little Janet. Yay! Little Janet from the Thrilling Adventure Hour. That's... I'm also very excited, guys. Thanks and for I don't coming. I don't didn't know what the topic was, and I was as excited coming in as I am now knowing what the topic is, because I'm here because of you. I was gonna oh, say for yeah. you, but that sounds like a favor. Hundred <laughs> percent not true. <laughs> Listen, I'm just here to raise Ugh. money for your little telephone. <laughs> I'm a giver. <laughs> well, we appreciate you giving your time generously. <laughs> this big clock on the wall is uh, ticking down and is ticking up the amount of money that we're getting uh, sent in. Oh, so. so that clock does both. And what is that thermometer over that there? That just that proves you... that it's real hot in this room when <laughs> the air conditioner is I off. I see. I see. <laughs> wonderful. Wonderful. Uh, all right. You pulled a big list. I have. This is the Time 100 because I figure Time Magazine, a reputable uh, publication, can do all of our homework for us. Perfect. This well, is a list of classic toys. Our topic yeah, today to- is Time is known for its whimsy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, if you want to have just just some carefree fun. That's right. Pick up a Time magazine. Oh, yeah. That's right. And get lost. That's right. I mean, this week's issue, it, it, Donald Trump's head does look like a giant gumball that's melting. <laughs> I was going to say, to be honest, probably there have been many uh, issues yeah. where Mad Magazine's got nothing on the reality of what Time is reporting in our world. Yeah. So, <laughs> so Janet, you said you were excited about toys. Are you like a toy collector now or do you still like obviously when we're all kids we play with toys. Yeah. Are you still do you still are, do you collect any toys from childhood or like, what's what is well, your toy relationship? My my toy relationship is and this is uh this is good timing because and I don't know when this episode comes out and I'm not sure when I'm releasing Three hours. my Oh, is that true? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I've done it. I have for sure done that. Like god if something goes wrong with this, this I don't is know life. what. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but a um, very uh, good mutual friend of all of ours recently did my podcast and we just yesterday had the whole conversation about did you like t- to be a, pr- a young person who had the presence of mind to be like, mm, I'm not going to take this out of the box because it'll be worth something someday. Mm-hmm. That was the opposite of how I was. It was like mm-hmm. when I was done with something, the idea that anyone else would think it was anything other than garbage was like <laughs> right. inconceivable to you me. had you had toys that you, 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 you team and toys with no arms on them oh anymore. totally totally and i mean like my my aunt melted. passed down my aunt passed down all of her uh old barbie dolls to me mm-hmm. um, because she had a son and that was the only that was like the entire extended family it was like well you're getting all the girly stuff <laughs> and so she gave me these like kind of amazing in great shape because she was like a girl who 
respectfully played with her Barbies. So these like beautiful like 1960s like you know great sort of blue eye shadow with like a little mm-hmm. cat eye. Um, the Vera Ellen model. The Vera Ellen model uh, in immaculate condition. And by the time I was done with those and whatever dolls and Barbies I had, they were just destroyed. What exactly do you mean by destroyed? Can you describe? Can you describe I mean, what I the worst like... Bar- like your worst Barbie doll? The one that would sell like... for the least. Yeah. Well, or go for the most in an art gallery. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. They're very similar. I mean, I don't want to say like I was – first of all, it would be too cool if I was like Tim Burton. You know what I mean? I right. wasn't like, well, I had a dollhouse that I painted black and then I cut <laughs> off all the heads of the Barbies. But I did have – um I definitely cut their hair. Mm -hmm. I definitely drew on them. Like, oh, I'm going to give them better makeup than they were given (laughs) by the manufacturers. And then I had, like, my aunt also gave me this, like, the, like, beauty salon Barbie thing from her era. That's like a bigger head. Yeah, it's it's not a a person size head, but it's definitely like a cantaloupe size head Mm -hmm. with long blonde hair and. Um, you know, a, pl- a quote unquote plain face. I think she still she has like a lot of makeup on. You know what I mean? Face. Like, there's no, she's supposed to be makeupless, but uh-huh. I'm sure she still had like yeah, incredibly dark eyelined <laughs> yeah. eyes. But then it comes with a little palette that you can put makeup on, you can put lipstick on her, and you mm-hmm. can wipe it back off again. And you can, you know, brush it. It came with curlers, so you could curl her hair and stuff. And I feel like I had that for like a week before I had given her a buzz cut <laughs> and drawn. On uh, like p- with pen and markers, inappropriate makeup that was then permanent, so it just became like you know useless immediately. Because was it this, couldn't be changed? Was this the one that had the uh, the extra hair like inside the shell of a head? Yeah, so like I don't think you would so, cut it down yeah. and then you could yank more hair yeah, out. Yeah, I wish, but mm. I think this was before the era of the incredibly advanced technological uh, invention <laughs> of, of filling a plastic ball <laughs> with hair. A ball of hair. <laughs> did uh, did your aunt freak out when I she don't think saw? She ever saw? She lived in a different city, so I don't think once they left her home, I don't think she ever saw them again. You have to assume that if you're giving Barbies to a child, that I would think so. Yeah, I would think it's, so. It's not. Yeah. It's, it's not going to end yeah. well for the Barbies, but the kid's going to have a great time. Yeah, and I definitely yeah. did. And then as far as today, I do have a lot of toys. Mm-hmm. Um, I I have a couple from when I was a kid that you know are are the sort of worn like. Mm-hmm. Thread, threadbare kind of there sort of in a little um, cabinet uh, because I feel like if I touched it, it would fall apart. Mm-hmm. Right. But I do have a lot of just like, oh, this little toy from Japan or, oh, my – these Tron things that were like a special edition, yada, yada. There's a lot of whimsy. Mm-hmm. I mean not as much <laughs> as Time Magazine. But there's a lot of whimsy in my home to the point where it does look like a child lives there. <laughs> Oh, whose room is this? Yeah, Yeah. but like, and also like at child level. So, Mm -hmm. but if someone's kids come over, there's a lot of stuff I have to be like, and yet I don't really want this to be played with. Yeah, Yeah. I I, uh, at my day job, I have a desk that is covered in toys. Yeah, and and it's open office, so everybody can see everybody's workstation, and it looks like. Josh Baskin I think it's right. has my desk. And yeah. every time somebody brings their kids in, they look at it like it's the city of El Dorado. Yeah. They're like, yeah. oh, the toys. And I, my blood pressure shoots like <laughs> I three, four, seven. Like, get them away from the well, toys. And they the can look. Is, I don't know about you, but like mine aren't – it's not that mine are collectible or that they're of value in a way that I would ever be like, eh, please don't touch that. Right. It's only because like – I like them. It's yeah. not like I'm sure they were they are probably replaceable, but it's just like, well, I don't really want this to get broken. I'll be sad in the yeah. same way that like s- like dropping a, a nice cup and it shattering on the ground right. would also be like, oh, that's that's kind of a bummer. Yeah. You know it's not I mean? greed. It's yeah. selfishness. That's exactly right. OK. Yeah. <laughs> but that's yeah. the thing. Like you. you I'm an build... only child. Please. <laughs> yeah. Please, me please, too. Please. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I don't I didn't grow up. I learned not to share at a very young age when – Oh, please. Uh, when if there Matt, are any kids listening to this show. <laughs> when Matt from down the street who – I'd just gotten the Millennium Falcon, which was huge and like such a cool Yeah, that's toy. a big deal. He mm-hmm. dropped it immediately and it wasn't like Stranger Things where it's fine and they drop it 900 <laughs> times. It Like the the landing ramp, it broke and I still have that yeah. one and it will never be whole again unless I go spend money to get like the struts or whatever. Yeah. And I was like I can never let – any children touch my toys again because they'll oh, break Mr. Them. Scrooge. Listen, no, this is the thing. And I bet Hal's the same way. 
What I realized about myself fairly recently is I don't think of myself as a selfish person. And I think most no, people and no, and neither of us that. do. But I will say it's a control thing. And that's the thing you can't oh. stop from being an only child. Yeah. It's not that I wasn't generous. I wanted to share, but I wanted control over Right. I didn't want it to seem like it was out of my control. Like, what? I can't. What do you mean you just took it? <laughs> like, it still felt like this mm-hmm. is mine to share. And that yes. is a type of selfishness yeah. that I think is more incidental and totally unmeant than like, no, you can't touch my stuff. It's yeah. not that. It's, it's more of like a scary. Visits. Yeah. It's, just, it's like a fear. It's just a fear of, oh, my God, yeah. I can't enroll them. <laughs> I was a middle child. So uh, toys. I was a conduit for toys. <laughs> As they were, and that's why that's why objects have no value to me. That's right. uh, it was my brothers. I had it for a while, and then it yeah. went to my sister, and we were all comrades. Uh huh. So, no, um, that's good. It's probably a better way to grow. No, I, oh I'm no. Not, I'm not- <laughs> this is what led to the disposable cars, the series yeah. of disposable cars he's owned. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Time he's right. In LA. That's yeah. true. It was almost like a drug dealer with cell phones. Uh-huh. Yeah. Here's a $10 this car. I'm just going to leave it in this gap. Yeah. It's a, ni- it's a 1989 Toyota burner. <laughs> um, it's very zen. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And littery. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, super littery. <laughs> I'm just leaving cars everywhere. Crazy. Um, all right. So let's talk classic toys. Okay. We have all three of us in front of us have a list of classic toys. Uh, we're all hoping that between the three of us, we know what most of them right. are, but we're not 100% sure that's going to be true. Uh, yes. In the interest of time, let's go decade by decade and then see if anything, much, much like we do on a lot of the episodes of this show, we will pull out winners – and take them to the finals. Okay. Yeah, so who, who are going to be the finalists? And then once we have our finalists, we will determine. So let's start all the way back in the 1920s. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my dear, my dear little toy. Some of these the toys. The whimsier time is here. Go ahead. <laughs> the whimsier time is here. <laughs> there was much more whimsy in Time Magazine in the 20s. Oh. So carefree. Times person of the year is Willy Wonka. <laughs> All right. So in the 1920s, the big toys that came, the classic toys, these are what were de- determined classic toys. Uh, the classic toys were the radio flyer wagon, the, this is a lame toy, the chemistry set. Nerds. Nerds. Uh. The, the joy buzzer Which, for the Roger Rabbit Acme set. I mean, Somebody knew what they were doing when they named it the Joy Buzzer because yeah. they knew that how ironic that was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, the Yo Yo. Ooh. That's a, yeah, that's a classic. classic. That's a big time classic. That's a big yeah. one. That's like a landmark toy. Yeah. By the way, this was suggested by Harrison Wool via our email. We got this podcast. Oh, I thought Gmail. you were saying Harrison Wool invented the Yo Yo. And I <laughs> he was also made a invented- special <laughs> shout out. <laughs> yeah, special shout out to yeah. Harrison Wool. He didn't invent it, he suggested it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then Edison well, it a, stole it. It was a nicer time when people didn't steal each other's ideas. You could just suggest something and it would get invented. Yeah. <sighs> a pop up book. Pop up book. That's the nineteen twenties. Yeah. Would we include in this I mean there are pop up books, but then I remember the books that I had when I was a kid where you would pull tabs and stuff and yeah. creatures would appear mm-hmm. or walk across the screen and yeah. sometimes would pop out. Screen screen. <laughs> oh, I was born in the future. <laughs> I can't think of a better, more casual way for that to just come out. No. Um, I loved – can we well, count that as a still toy? a pop-up book. Yeah. That's my question. Yeah. The only reason I would discount it is that while it is an interactive book, it still goes with my books and not in, a, in like right. a toy box. Yeah. Did you – were you a fan of pop-up books? I guys? still love them. I, I think yeah. there's like a, a real science. art form. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. an art form and a science. It yeah. really is like what's like origami kind of. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, and it does seem now, especially what people are doing. And there's something so um, – like that thing where we now are more amazed by hand-hewn things that baffle us because we're mm-hmm. so kind of used to like CG and technology. And so when you have something that's just like articulate kind of paper – it mm-hmm. feels like, what magic is this? Yeah. You know? It's, uh, they are, yeah. I highly recommend if you haven't seen the Star Wars pop-up book. I don't think I have. It is fantastic. Oh, wow. There's one page you open up and a full-size Darth Vader oh, head, oh. like the helmet, the face, everything. It comes out. I was going to imagine there must be an ad ad that kind of comes up. There's an ad ad. Yeah. There's a uh, Death Star. That's there's, cool. It's... Maybe I have seen it because I'm now I'm just imagining it so well that right. I think maybe I'm remembering it <laughs> instead. I'm really good at imagination, <laughs> you guys. Janet, this is all an inception. You've been asleep for 10 yeah. hours. <laughs> we need you to write us a Star Wars sequel. Okay. Yeah. On it. 
they have there already been Ewoks? <laughs> yeah. Ha- okay, uh, I'm going to need a few minutes. <laughs> <laughs> that was your whole thing. Yeah. It's just a bunch of Ewoks hanging out? <laughs> yeah. And they're working at Time Magazine and they're That's real right. whimsical? That's right. Uh, Alfred E. Newman does make an appearance. It's uh, Time Magazine oh. meets Mad Magazine. Were you a Mad Magazine fan? I was. Yeah. And I read Cracked. I liked Cracked, oh, too. Yeah. I felt like Cracked was the knockoff man. It was. I yeah. mean, I thought of it that way, too. And then yeah. somewhere along the line, I was like, maybe I don't care. Maybe I want more than one magazine that does this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Anything that was, like, humor-based. Yeah. Like, I had to, like, ingest it and, and read it right away. Even those terrible, like, Mother Goose jokes. Like, really <laughs> bad, like... The like, zaniest joke book for kids. Yeah. It was just yeah. a bunch of dads at a barbecue that got uh-huh. together. Like, let's put some <laughs> zingers down for all time. <laughs> we can do this just as well as anyone. Now, yeah. if we are looking, I mean, we're all fans of Mad Magazine. If we're considering a pop-up book, uh, a toy, then we would have to consider Mad Magazine yeah. a toy because of the fold. It just cracks. Yeah. It cracks open too many big haunting questions. So we've got we to give a huge shout out to the pop-up book. See you later. But is Yo-Yo going to make it to the finals out of uh, out of the 1920s? That would be my choice. Yeah, I mean the Radio Flyer wagon. The Radio is, Flyer wagon is huge. It's great, but it also seems like something you have yeah. to do work with. It's also I a fu- agree. yeah, it's I a agree. functional vehicle. I agree. Yeah. It's it's like we have two children, one of them needs to carry the other and they're too <laughs> small. Let's get a wagon <laughs> yeah. and tell and them t- it's a gift. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's funny when you think about the reason for toys. Like, toys exist to make children happy at their core, but they also teach you things about the world and what you're going to be doing. Like, I know I had a plastic uh, kitchen when mm-hmm. I was a kid. Like, you had the plastic food and the little stove and, like, all the... All those things and the the little plastic toolkit uh-huh. and all the like little grown up versions of things. I guess the radio flyer wagon is like, here, kid, we're preparing you now for being a one of these worker grunt pack <laughs> mules. <laughs> and I had that action figure that was a sort of adult that was just barely keeping it together. So I was prepared <laughs> for what it would be like now. <laughs> but yeah, the radio flyer is – that's – that's something like if you were really lucky, you could train your dog to pull you around. That's right. Did anybody ever do no, that? No, the little rascals no. did that. <laughs> yeah. No human ever actually. Hollywood dogs. Like real, yeah. Hollywood dogs. Dumb Hollywood dogs. Right, I tried so to get my dog one. to do that right. once because I had a Siberian Husky as a kid. And it was like, come on, man. They do this in the Iditarod. Like this is what Huskies do is they drag people around. Yeah. He's like, this is Tennessee, man. Uh, <laughs> not even. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> All really right. cool that you had a talking dog though. Yeah. It was Agreed. Great. Yeah. All right. Very Let's slippery. move on to the 1930s. I don't know oh. how different music was from the 20s. It's I feel like we're in the carousel of progress. Yeah. Oh, hold on. I got it. A little off an Annie. Oh. <laughs> That's the 30s, right? <laughs> yes, yes because on this list, hmm? the Red Ryder BB gun. Oh, oh indeed. Okay, there we go. Um, well, I'm not to, voting for you guys that. I'm read not this voting list? for a gun. No. No. Am I going to have not, to read all these lists? N- well, I mean, you did this. I know. <laughs> Pal, you read the 30s and I'll read okay, the 40s. Fine. We have the stuffed Mickey Mouse. We've got finger paint. Oh. The sock monkey, which feels like it came along a lot earlier. Um, yeah. The Buck Rogers rocket pistol, which really was sort of the the gold standard for every sort of ray gun that mm-hmm. shot sparks or did whatever that came oh, after. Oh, okay. It. Uh, the uh, microscope set, nerd. So the chemistry set in the 20s, the microscope set in the 30s. And the next one was a full working radiation machine. <laughs> um, the beach ball, which is a classic. Oh, that but is I, classic. When I saw it was on the list, I went, oh, beach ball? <laughs> Come on. What am I, a seal? Uh, the Red Rider BB gun. The which green... I already poo-pooed. Yeah, like that's, the, that's like gone. Like the bleeding no heart guns. level I yeah. am. No, sing it out. Uh, that means that. Buck Rogers is also done. Um, the army men, the green, little green army men. Um, How's that liberal? <laughs> <laughs> they have where, guns. <laughs> keep them where they belong as yeah. tiny toys. I don't know. I don't know. Uh oh, Viewmaster. Yeah. Viewmaster oh. is I want to give that an automatic like yeah. straight to the straight to the metal podium. I yeah. just bought new Viewmaster slides uh last week. I was at a uh I was in uh, Dumbo in New York City at the flea market there, and there was a case of these. It was probably maybe three feet long, just Viewmaster slides. Oh, nice. And I was obsessed with a Viewmaster as a kid. And uh, this I was very excited because they had Knott's Berry Farm Viewmaster oh, slides. Oh, sure. They had Tomorrowland at Disneyland oh, wow, Viewmaster slides. Nice. And they had East Tennessee Viewmaster slides, which is where I'm from. So I was oh, very excited. That's interesting. Yeah. 
What so, ones did you pass up? Because those are oh, like a bunch of really great ones, or just there randos. were a lot of travel ones. Yeah, they have them from like anybody that took photos anywhere in the world. They turned them into ViewMaster slides. Yeah. Oh yeah. If you somehow don't know what a ViewMaster is, it looks sort of like a pair of binoculars, but the mm-hmm. the outside the side that is not held up to your eyes is flat. Mm-hmm. You put a disc with pictures with basically slides on it, and then you uh, use a lever on the side to advance the slides. Yeah. And when you look, it's it's stereo vision. So there was a, a is... previous version of it. A much better description than yeah. I ever could have come up with. Yeah, you I really – that was like the, the manual. I and hawed for like five minutes. <laughs> I would, you know what I would have settled on? It looks like something Devo would wear. And I would be like, what's Devo? And I would be like, I don't know how to describe Devo Here, look either. look at this Devo Viewmaster slide. <laughs> yeah. You'll see what they look like. <laughs> Thank God we had that handy. The Tomorrowland one I'm particularly excited about because it seems like it would represent like the old Tomorrowland. Right. Like the people yes. mover. Future-y and, kind of – yeah. Yeah. All and that stuff one thing. No where it there. shrinks you down to germ size or something that then became yeah, oh, the Star Tours. Journey into Imagination. Yeah. Uh, Body Wars. I don't know. That was called Body Wars, the one oh, that, beca- that, that eventually became uh, Star Tours. Okay. But the original is. the original one were in the 50s or 60s where you saw people go through – you were, you saw a miniature yes, version of the car. That was called Journey I, into Imagination. Uh, okay. Anyway. That I for sure thought was real because yes. of that device where yes. you're waiting in line and you know you see – our size people getting into these pods mm-hmm. and then they show little tiny pods going right. through the air a little further away. <laughs> yeah. I was like, if that's not proof that we are shrinking down, I they don't know what it is. Possibly, they can't fake that. They, yeah, they <laughs> couldn't have possibly recorded yeah. fake uh, security camera footage. <laughs> so then uh, the right. Viewmaster's coming out. I actually recently found, by the way, and bought as a gift mm-hmm. for a friend. A set of of Viewmaster slides that had Tomorrowland, New Orleans Square, Adventureland, Frontierland, oh, see, like all the original, yeah. like from either the late fifties or early sixties. That's great for a Disney 60s. buff. I never would have thought. Oh, that Viewmaster that slides as a good are gift for a Disney buff. Yeah. Also, I feel like th- this wins because it's one of those uh, toys that seems ahead of its time. Like to me, mm-hmm. it seems early, like the thirties. That was yeah, invented. I was that seems to like a that. future. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. Right. Well, yeah, we didn't really go into what makes a great toy, but it's also hard. Each decade, we're going to find one, and there's going to be a different criteria for mm-hmm. why it wins. No, I think you're right. So. Also, there's certain things like, like a stuffed Mickey Mouse. Like that's not you. You don't think of Disney specific to just that one thing, so you sort of throw that out because it's mm-hmm. like, yeah, but in comparison with the invention of Disneyland, yeah, right. and like all of the Disney cartoons live act, you know, just all of that, right? And then also like something like finger paint. You're like, well, but I mean. They would find a way. It's not yeah, like kids have been painting kids with would their never hands. have yeah. painted if not for finger paint. <laughs> also, <laughs> the stuff Mickey Mouse is just, you guys, we took a teddy bear and branded it. That's right. Like, that's, yeah. That's okay. right. All right. So the Viewmaster is coming out of the 30s. Yes. I'm sure. so excited about that. Okay. Now, uh, 1940s, Bubble Solution, Little Golden Books. Oh. I think we all know what we're doing with books. Yeah. Slinky, uh oh, mm-hmm. Magic 8 Ball, and. Legos. Oh, this is a come good on. Like the, I know. Wow. I know. If they're going to only be one. They're, Highlander we can have style. Two. Yeah. We can have then a I couple. I think we have our already. answer already, but. Well, yeah. Yeah. Stop. Bubble solution. Well, <laughs> huh. Can I talk to you for a second? Yeah, what's wrong? Or here. is that really what you were going to say? I was going to say bubble Can solution. you read the list again and yeah. just tell me if you really think that's yeah. the one you would bubble go Bubble solution, with? little golden book, slinky magic eight ball Legos. It's going to be bubble solution. Okay. Guys, you about done? We need to pick one. We're coming. Okay. Or maybe Legos. Okay, thank you. Whew. What'd you guys come up with? Bubble uh, solution. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm convinced too. Yes, I agree. Bubble yeah. solution, hundred <laughs> percent. Absolutely. It's just, it's soapy uh, water in a bottle. Who would have thought of that? Who could have ever thought of that? Um, my my question for this is. Do we also – can we take a – do we want to take a second or is Slinky only nostalgic because they still sell it at Cracker Barrel and it's – it goes down – Slinkies are fun. I think if 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 Legos weren't in this, I would say Slinky. I would Because it, it, it is impossible to argue with its longevity even though it's a yeah. preposterous thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It is, you know? it is a dangerous yeah. coil of metal <laughs> with one property that That's someone right. dis- figured out and was like, eh, kittle like this. Yeah. yeah. Which I immediately tangled up my slinky yeah. too. If I, Same whenever here. I got one, it was ruined very and, quickly. And it goes down, it doesn't go downstairs. It goes down stair. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because you flip it down the first stair and then it gets to the second stair and then it stops. Yeah. I've, now I know I would have gone with bubble solution if there weren't Legos. <laughs> 
But I do like the Magic 8-Ball, too. Uh, the Magic 8-Ball is fun. Yeah. No. Magic 8-Ball is one of those things that persist. I mean, the, that reason- seems like an adult like, I don't yeah. put it, it's like not that fun for kids. It's fun mm-hmm. when you're a grown up and you're like, remember these? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Kids all, the kids just have a bunch of dumb questions. They don't even have good questions yeah. for a magic eight ball. It's yeah. wasted on youth. Yeah. But the, yeah. the Legos are the toys that have continued to grow and yeah. expand mm-hmm. and evolve and are just as relevant now. I mean, like, they've become this sort of licensing powerhouse. So you can get a Lego version of almost anything and they have user submitted stuff. Like what they've done as a company is incredible. Yeah. What Slinky's done is made a metal spring and a plastic spring and that's it. But yep. are you excited about the Slinky movie? I'm really excited. <laughs> <laughs> With Chris Pratt as one of the coils. That's right. <laughs> Uh, Each coil has a different actor. That's terrible. <laughs> oh, we're about to go down the stairs. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, so coming out of that round is the the greatest thing that Denmark ever exported, the Lego. Yes. Wonderful. All right. Uh, the 1950s. That's a, that's a big list, 1950s. All right. I got a big list to read. All right. I'm all shook up. That's the 50. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it is. <laughs> some of these, some of these from the 1950s. Go ahead. Don't even feel like, like somebody just packaged this. Like the idea is the very first one on the list is water balloon. Like, come yeah. on, man. Again. Yeah. Somebody just. That would have been a thing. Yeah, some of these are discoveries and not toys. Yeah. All right. <laughs> This balloon holds a lot of water. Or like oh. Gumby. He was – we knew he existed only because he was discovered in the <laughs> living in his clay world and we did those documentaries what? on him. Uh, all right. Oh, man. This is going to be a hard one. We're going we're gonna to pull yeah, a few out tough. of this one. They never forgot the Great Blockhead Invasion <laughs> of 1951. All right. Uh, I uh, the water, Gumby material. The water balloon. <laughs> Silly putty. Fisher <laughs> Price little people. Oh. Color forms. Oh. Oh. Paint by Numbers, mm. Mr. Potato Head, Ooh. Wiffle Ball, Yay. The Matchbox Car, oh. The Pez Dispenser, oh. Gumby, oh. Yeah. Play-Doh, Ooh. The Tonka Truck, mm. Wow, The Frisbee, oh. what? Corn Popper. Oh, that little thing that you walk, that little kids walk that looks like a vacuum. Oh, oh okay. the, sure. I had sure. one of those. Yeah. One. Sure. Uh, the two-handed pogo stick. Finally, the, the one-handed <laughs> version. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> And the three-handed version required friends. <laughs> uh, the hula hoop. That's already been covered in yeah. Hudsucker Proxy, so I feel that we're absolved from that. <laughs> the Barbie doll. Oh. The troll doll. Oh. The, I didn't know those were the same decade. The play rail toy train. I don't play know what rail. play rail is. I think that's play probably rail. the wooden track. Oh, and, sure. Uh, the oh, okay. train goes along them. All right. um, <laughs> the toy train is a, a pretty big classic. Uh, the Chatty Cathy. But that can't be the first toy train, can it? Uh, no, but I think that particular – because a lot okay. of them were the, the electrical I'm trains. discounting that only because I feel we need more information about toy trains in general. Mm-hmm. Yeah. To put it into context. We still don't know what they're really up to. <laughs> yeah. Toy trains, <laughs> reveal yourselves. Um, we're such a suspicious group. We are. Okay. And, uh, and then Kathy. finally we have Chatty Kathy. And... So that's a doll that talks, I have yeah. to assume? It was the original yes. talking doll. Okay. She just said, Ack. All right. <laughs> and then later, yeah. chocolate. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then, uh, and then fake vomit. Keeps, my doll keeps talking about her kissing thighs. <laughs> uh, and fake vomit was the final one. Fake vomit. Yeah. <sighs> not, sure. not a toy. Eliminated. That's yeah. like, same with Joy Buzzer. Like, I don't know if you can put practical jokes like a whoopee cushion. Yeah. I mean, I understand yeah. they give a lot of joy to a lot of people. I loved them. I had all of them it as a really child. really feels like something at the expense of someone else's should not be in the top. <laughs> group Ugh, there <laughs> she vomit. goes again <laughs> um were you guys vomit. did you guys have the practical jokes as kids sure yeah yeah that's it i mean yeah that I'm was like it being just... so high and mighty but i if anyone had one i'd be like we got to use this on everyone get the whoopee yeah. cushion yeah and you put the whoopee cushion and like i the couch cushion is a little higher than the other side i know it's under there yeah <laughs> <laughs> but janet put it there so i'm gonna sit down and she's yeah. gonna giggle yeah oh but if you fooled somebody you got to hear the fart noise which is <laughs> it was and it's a good wet fart yeah too. it really it is nice. just a raspberry you're like grandma uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Has anybody ever sat on one and thought that they farted? Like, oh, oh I never knew. <laughs> <laughs> never knew. And it was a loud. Yeah, it was. Yeah. I never knew I could fart, not know it, and it be that loud. <laughs> I mean, I've let some little ones that I didn't know were mine. But. Yeah. yeah, I agree. Or when you're laughing in class at school. 
<laughs> just me? Great. Sometimes. Yep. No, no, no. Um, it can squeak out. There's yeah, no yeah. question about it. <laughs> yeah, or or just all the way. <laughs> uh, okay, so what are getting our votes for this? Uh, we all, I feel, had a very sentimental feeling about Fisher Price Little People, which are also still around. Yes, they're the 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 little little round, round just like, like the a thicker head ones. And they're then, about yeah. as about as thick around as a fifty cent piece. Yeah, they all right. look like Charlie Brown. They all look like Charlie Brown. Okay. I get those confused so with cute. uh the other little people ones. The little tykes? Little tykes. I don't or even Playmobil. know if I know. Playmobil, what... that's oh, the one. Oh, I'm I confusing I'm confusing yeah. Playmobil now, and little people. Price is less sophisticated. They I are think. yeah, they're Fisher all price. round bottom. They're basically mm-hmm. yeah. cylindrical, so you would get a car that would have two round slots and that's where they would sit. Yeah. Right. I definitely had the farm. I had the farm yep. with a little the little gate that when you pull open the gate it goes. Yeah. Was that electronic or was it like one of those little things that you would have, flip upside down. Yeah, it must have been. I, the, yeah, I think it must have been that mm-hmm. because there was nothing advanced about this yeah. barn. But it was real cute. <laughs> there was nothing advanced. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I want that future there was barn. No, like, there was no chip inside <laughs> creating that. <laughs> no sound. robots. No <laughs> robots. Zero robots. Hal, do they have those when you were born in the future? Uh-huh. <laughs> Well, then we don't have farms anymore. That's why I've come back here. We've uh, got to save those farms. Oh. <laughs> this took a, uh, this took an environmentalist turn, this it movie. Did. Yeah. Paint by numbers. We can throw that out. I am doing a paint by numbers right now. They are a nightmare. I thought it was going to uh, be a really fun thing. And I was like, Oh, there's a dozen paint colors. How hard could this be? Yeah. And I got in there and instead of one through 12 in the little things, it will say like 12 slash two mm. slash four. And I'm like, Oh, I have to mix these. Right. So there's really hundreds That's of how colors. They get you. Yeah. Well, I speaking of uh do I collect anything? I don't I guess I don't think of myself as a collector, but I will say that I do have probably 10 night circa 1950s paint by numbers that other people have done that are completed that I that are completed that I bought on eBay because they do have like a very pleasing when done well. Mm-hmm. There's something very pleasing about the way they look. There's a lot of, you know, sort of Um, little like French town scenes and then there's just you know the sort of two fawns grazing (laughs) next to a stream I do like them and they almost blend they almost (laughs) blend the colors almost (laughs) blend yeah exactly a whimsical child reading a time magazine (laughs) yeah Yeah, well that's the thing is I think of it as being something that like bored housewives did in the 50s Mm. I don't really think I don't associate it with children yeah why don't you sit quietly and do something in for hours and hours something tedious for hours yeah. on end. Yeah. While your husband is at work, yeah, you can that's... complete this paint by numbers. Fill and sit the silently. hole in your heart yeah. with, yeah. <laughs> um, so that's why I, t- even though I collect them, I take them out of this for myself. Yeah. What about, I mean, the, the Barbie is still ubiquitous. Yeah, that but is. I just, I've had so many, pro- you know, as again, it's, I don't think that it ever gave a great sense of yeah. girls about what their body should look like. So I got to take her out of there. Yeah. Especially, especially the classic version. Yeah. They do have the five new bodies of Barbie now. But the class, yeah, this is too late. Yeah, I will <laughs> too say late. Too, too late. I'm an adult already. You, you already <laughs> damaged damage me. Is done. <laughs> the damage is done. My waist is roughly the same size as every other part of the middle yeah. part of my body. <laughs> they need to make a Barbie for adults that just says, "I'm sorry." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you were fine. How you yeah. were? My bad. You look great. <laughs> Uh, She's just congratu- oh. congratulations on your PhD. That's right. I'm sorry I gave you this idea of what you were supposed to look like. Ah, uh, exactly. Is right. there a toy? The, the one that comes out here, that comes out of here, and really sort of sticks with me is the frisbee, which is not the sexiest choice. But I remember like how much fun they were to play with yeah. as a kid, and then as a teenager. I learned about ultimate frisbee, and I, I consider to... a frisbee a sport, and that's why I disqualify. Yeah, it on this list. I guess so. For, I, the same reason I would pull, thing. I would pull uh, the wiffle bat and yeah. wiffle ball yes. out of there. I mean, as much is, fun as they are, because we have to make the tough choices. Because there's so many good ones in this one. Absolutely. I mean, the corn popper. Sure, I had one, but mm-hmm. <sighs> we all did. Sure. No, I mean that doesn't make it for and me. Can I, what about pe- the Pez dispenser, guys? The Pez dispenser is great. It's a food it distribution can, yeah, system. Yeah, candy, tart, delicious candy that also is collectible in a very mm-hmm. collectible way. Yeah. And at a certain point, if I had a Pez dispenser in the candy and I had like three of the clips of candy, yeah. I would mm-hmm. put one in and then within 10 minutes, all the candy would be eaten. And then I'd sure. be like, oh, I figured this out. It's a puzzle. I'm like a, I'm like a NASA <laughs> monkey. I'm like, oh, if you just open the wrapper, you can put all the candy in your mouth at once. <laughs> And that's why I need therapy. Uh, I don't need uh, I don't need this complicated yeah. spoon. Uh, that's right. That's right. <laughs> there are a couple on this 1950s list that uh, I think we can pull one of the two. Uh, and I think I think Plato beats Silly Putty if we're going yeah. with 
polymers that uh, are useful and smell weird. Yeah. Um, I think, Agreed. Po- uh, the, but specifically for me, the ones that, that stand out the most in this are Mr. Potato Head and Play-Doh. Okay. Yeah. yeah, Mr. Potato Head, super iconic. I just don't remember, I don't remember caring about him beyond the first novelty of plugging in mm-hmm. a certain face and then yeah. being like, oh, I can put, like I would say I would get two faces in and then be like, I got it. Yeah. I'm good. Yeah, you get a little bit of fun out of, of faces. putting his putting. I'm gonna put lips where his eyes go. Yeah, and Picasso it out a little yeah. bit. Right. So that's why that doesn't do, that doesn't make the list for me. Only because I appreciate it. I have a lot of. I feel sentimental about it. Mm-hmm. But it's just not a. It's I. I don't wouldn't go back to it over and over again like you right. do with Play Doh. I just like Don Rickles a lot. <laughs> yeah, and I we love Toy Story. So yeah, well, and it's a, it's an interesting toy in that it was originally just a set of accessories that you'd stick into an actual potato. Is that true? Yes. And then, oh. so you would buy the accessories, and then you would use one of mom's potatoes, and you would give it eyes and a nose and and I like that or whatever. Version. That is way better yeah. version. Yeah, and then, of course they probably required anything. sharpness to get them to stick into the potato. Oh. Well, I think they were metal, so they would they would oh, stick. No. Look, no, yeah. no toy was safe. Here's we're eyeballs with needles on the them. Safe toy. Yeah, <laughs> these are all death traps in one the way or pl- another. The piece was actually asbestos with it was attached with a razor blade <laughs> that you would have to slit into the potato. Just uh, uh, you chew on the fiberglass uh-huh. to get it nice. <laughs> You make an eyeball shape. Uh, but then later on, they, they revealed the uh, – or came up with the plastic potato where his butt opens and you can store everything in there. But they mm-hmm. never made it the right size to store all the stuff that it oh, came with. Yeah. And that's a weird... It was hard to get his ear out of his butt. Yeah. yeah. Shame on you, Play School. I think it was Play School oh, that, boy, play that school. Is, was releasing that shame on their faces. You schooled them. <laughs> uh, yeah, da, da, da. Matchbox car. I mean, there's a lot of great stuff on yeah, here. There's... Yeah. But I do agree that if I have to really think about something that means something to me – and has survived, and you could play with over and over and over again. I would say Play Doh. It's interesting. You said we could pull a couple out of these. We can pull something a couple else out that Do people can't stand walking away from. Yeah, I don't. I mean, there's I'm, nothing in here that that I feel the need to bring along. There's nothing because we are ultimately going to pick one. Yeah. There's nothing in this list that's going to beat Play Doh. I don't think. I agree. Um, it's funny that two of the ones that we've pulled so far are. Like art project thing, or like creative art toys. Yeah. Right. Were you guys uh, creative? Like, were you Crayola kids or were you, I, what's the other, Nerf kids? I what, guess. architects? <laughs> yeah, architects. I had a full drafting table. <laughs> well, like, well, like, I mean, there's like, there's action figure. There, like, if you break toys into categories, yeah. there's like, the here's a thing that doesn't move much, but my imagination can make yeah. this little Superman be Superman. Yeah. There is, I'm going to build and create things. There's, here is a ball to play with friends. Um, yeah. I didn't have a ball or friends, but I definitely know. <laughs> I didn't. I don't feel I played. I you would have a like a ball. I mean, I'm sure I had a ball lying around. <laughs> but I. But I would say for me, action figures as much as making stuff. Yeah. Right. No. Yeah. I. I don't know. I wasn't you? you as a child. Did you? Was do you a, think you were more one than the other? I was more of a. I was actually. I was. I had the microscope kit. I know we were making fun That's of it. Great. But, <laughs> That's great. Yeah. I, I the, wish I would have been that kid. The microscope kit was. It was a, it was about like the uh, Mr. Potato Head was though, where it's like, okay, I have a stack of a dozen slides. I'm gonna look at these slides. That's what a that's what a fruit fly looks like. <laughs> yeah. I okay. I too. Yeah. Let me go play with my play doh and make right, things right. over and over. Oh, oh, wait a minute. I have to see if there is one that's going to come in here later because if it did not make the final list. Oh, like if Time Magazine didn't. If Time Magazine didn't yeah. include something, <laughs> the other one that I was along with Play-Doh for me was Lincoln Logs. I love. Oh, I definitely did not have Lincoln yeah. Logs. Oh no, you guys weren't. I, maybe I, it, maybe it wasn't as classic as I assume it is. I had Tinker Toys. I had Tinker Toys mm-hmm. too. Linker log. Linker, Linker, Linker logs. logs. Link. Linger logs. Linker <laughs> logs. They Boy, just they just will not pick themselves up <laughs> off the floor. <laughs> and I had human size, like large Tinker Toys, like lawn Tinker Toys. Oh wow! That you could use to make a cool. fort. Oh, Except that, that we had cool. to keep those in the shed, and that's where all the black widows were. So. It, yeah. it really was like a very <laughs> supervised form of play and also like I was secretly always afraid a Blackwood was going to crawl out from one of the like connector pieces. That's because they could have. Yeah. yeah. That's a perfectly reasonable fear. Yeah. yeah. That's why I am still terrified of spiders. Yeah. Same here. Yeah. I, not for that reason, but. Well, now you're even more afraid knowing what I went through. You're projecting back to yes, my fear. Yes, I am. <laughs> and adding that to yours. Um, we share it. Fear power. Fear so power. We gave a bunch of honorable mentions for the 1950s. Mm-hmm. Uh, is anything – else besides Play-Doh going to make it out of that round? I'm okay with just that. Yeah. Okay. I'll tell you what. Before we move forward in time again, Mm -hmm. let's take a quick break and hear from some of the other great shows on the Maximum Fun Network. (laughs) 
Hi, are you a fan of Star Trek The Next Generation? Well, that's weird because it's a corny show. But my friends Ben Harrison and Adam Pranica do a lovely podcast about it. It's called The Greatest Generation and it's on MaximumFun.org. I thought that this podcast was a bad idea, but I was wrong. Please listen to The Greatest Generation on MaximumFun.org. Hey there, European Max Funsters. Do not miss your chance to catch some of your favorite Max Fun shows live at the London Podcast Festival, September 22nd through 26th. See amazing guests like Armando Iannucci, Josie Long, and Romare on stage with Jesse Thorne during Bullseye, bust a gut at classic panel show hijinks with International Waters, and witness some tough but fair internet justice dispensed by Judge John Hodgman himself. The Beef and Dairy Network show is already sold out, but hey, at least you can enjoy being in the proximity of the premier expert on beef animals and dairy herds, right? More guests will be announced soon and tickets are going fast. Go to MaximumFun.org for tickets right now so you don't live a life steeped in regret. How about that? That's a lot to choose from. Thank God we don't have to choose one of those. I know. Yes. Oh, that's our next episode. Uh-oh. <laughs> What's the best Maximum Fun podcast? Oh, I'm glad I'm not here for that. Uh, <laughs> all right. 1960s. Uh-oh. You got a long list, too. Wait, what's the 1960s? One pill makes a <laughs> Take LSD. Okay. Oh, that's a good question. Like, do things get trippier? We're about to find out. Oh, do yeah. Do toys get trippier in the 50s or 60s and 70s? I don't know. That magic sure. eight ball already happened. That's true. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> hey, man, just ask this magic eight ball. <laughs> it's purple and tells you things. <laughs> oh, wait. Is a Ouija board on here? No. Screw no. those things, man. Those things are terrifying. Yeah, that is of the well, devil. Well, I mean, speaking of like you're waiting, you're Ooh. looking for the answer from someone else. <laughs> but that magic eight ball, you just made me think of Crispin Glover as Andy Warhol at the doors. <laughs> just, oh, um, yeah. I have this magic eight ball and i can talk to god <laughs> i don't have anything to ask him so he, you have it um, um, was that real crispin glover was andy warhol yeah the with the golden phone that he could talk I to god be honest with you mm-hmm. when i saw that movie all it did was cement for me what i already knew which is i didn't want to hang out with the doors yeah jim morrison's <laughs> kind of a jerk yeah like i felt i immediately was like oh i know him he's yeah. like the guy in high school i was like shut <laughs> up no one cares <laughs> About your stupid poems and put your shoes back on. Oh, if, uh, you, if you ever want to hear like the height of hubris on his on his birthday, I think it's like twenty sixth birthday. Mm-hmm. He got drunk and went into a recording studio and recorded a bunch of his poetry. So he put out an album. It was put out posthumously called An American Prayer. The other three doors went in and added like weird sort of like jazzy mm-hmm. music behind it. And I, I was a big Doors fan when I was like fourteen until that movie came out. I was like, <laughs> oh, I guess they're not so great. And that album is unlistenable. <laughs> yeah. It's the uh, worst. I have to remember, they were just young kids. They you know were. what I mean? Like, yes. if, for, if he was 26, when I hear that now, I'm like, oh, of course he was, like, pretentious and lost and, like, taking a bunch of drugs. And mm-hmm. first of all, I took a bunch of drugs, so, drugs, so I'm not saying, like, I was above that. Right. But I, they're just, for, for me, there was a difference where, like, I was one of those snobs that would say, like, no, the Beatles were the real thing, you guys. <laughs> but Jim Morrison was not. <laughs> There is a, there's a lot a, of people disagree with me, and I respect that. But well, wrong. look, there's a lot of Doors posters in college. Yeah, <laughs> like a lot, yeah. of, a lot of Beatles posters, a lot yeah. of Abbey Roads. Yeah, a lot what, of Abbey what, Roads. What what uh, posters did you have in college? Like when you the first time you had to decorate a dorm room? Would yeah, you have? I well, I had tons and tons of posters in my high school. Uh, room which mm-hmm. now looking back i was way cooler because when i got to college something in me thought i had to be a grown-up so i had to take down my silence of the lambs poster and my like sinead o'connor yeah because children love silence <laughs> of the yeah lambs. yeah i mean i was very i was much cooler and put up like oh the the college is having that art fair here's van gogh's sunflowers <laughs> and like yeah. monet's it's the Garden first the Orsay first week on the quad whatever. yeah and yeah. got like a blanket that had like sunflowers on it it was definitely like <laughs> this is what grown-ups do for sure <laughs> i have fine <laughs> fine art posters on my wall now <laughs> fine art posters yes. <laughs> like is it really 100%. a monet if in block script 100%. it says monet there's like bottom. a little bit of spaghettios splattered on 
on it, yeah. like a tear at the bottom on the th- near the thumbtack. Uh, the yeah. Mona Lisa isn't up on the Louvre by that tacky blue <laughs> clay. Is that how they put that putty? up? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. What yeah. did you call it? Earthquake putty. Is it called earthquake putty? The stuff well, that you, you would use... hang posters with? Well, but yeah, because here you use that to, you know, you hang something with nails, but then you do, you do a series of those dots to secure the the thing so that if there's an earthquake, it won't just fall off. Is that what you're, oh, I, that's I what you're supposed, that. supposed to do. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, I think hell. some stuff I do have earthquake puttied. We're going over to your house after this. Mm-hmm. Okay. And we're puttying everything. Putty, putty, putty party. <laughs> <laughs> including oh. my wife. I'm just going to putty her <laughs> putty down. Party. I don't you want you to get hurt in an earthquake. Say, just please. putty putty some pillows to her knees and elbows. <laughs> She's always going to be ready for an earthquake. Put this helmet on, sweetheart. I just yeah. want to see what it looks like right now. Ignore the blue lining. Uh, All right. Let's okay. go to the 1960s. 60s. We've got the Etch-A-Sketch. Rock-A-Stack. Heck. Ken, Barbie's <laughs> bow. Did not come to lips. Uh, the slip and slide. That's sports. Oh, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> it's sports. Sorry. Gone. It's gone with the Anything Frisbee. Anything they, they compete for in the Olympics, which I think they yeah. do for yeah. slip and slide. Uh, congratulations <laughs> to the Dutch team for winning the slip and slide. This Again. Year. Ugh, every time. Uh, Got the chatter telephone, which I think talked back to you. It was real sassy. Interesting. <laughs> that feels like it's just out of the Roger Rabbit movie somehow. Without... <laughs> I gotta get on my chatter telephone. <laughs> um, G.I. Joe, the original wow. uh, 12 inch figures. The giant oh, ones. Yeah. Okay. It was like Rocky the Marine and Salty the Sailor. Boy, they were the dolls. They were yeah. like, let's make Barbies were, for boys. They were men's right. uh, Barbies, yes. Right. Uh, men's Barbies? <laughs> for the gentleman on the go. G.I. Yeah. Yeah. Joe. That offends everyone. Yeah. <laughs> just in, Especially that because we got uh, yelled at for being heteronormative, and we just called G.I. Joe's man right. Barbies. Well, yeah. look. <laughs> <laughs> Women, men, gay and straight, all uh, hate you now. Right, yeah. The Sorry. Easy Bake Oven, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which makes food, so maybe it does You can yeah. definitely bake, yeah. You makes food with a light bulb. It is an appliance. <laughs> Uh, creepy crawlers. I don't know. What that Those I don't remember what creepy crawlers that you were. Throw against the oh, wall. Oh, just like gooey, snotty yeah. things that kind of those, creep yeah, down the wall. I think those good, are good stocking crawlers. stuff or use it once yeah. again. Yeah. Good, lose again, it, good it gets, for or one it gets time. dirty, and oh, then it they were, doesn't it gets creep di- anymore. If it gets dirty, yeah, immediately. immediately. <laughs> yeah. If you had a carpeted house, yeah, no, you you're no, you're right. Yeah, rock 'em sock 'em robots. There you go. Johnny Seven O M A. I have no idea what that is. Never Zero heard of it. Zero idea. And the they're not going to put Lincoln know. Logs on this, but they're going to put Johnny Seven O M A. Time, you suck. <laughs> oh, wait, this is too much whimsy. Yeah, it's so much say. whimsy at time. The C and say. Which one's the C and say? So like speak and spell. That's I, different. Is that no. the, where you pull the thing and the you pull the, the arrow on it and the arrow spins around and. Hmm. Goes to the cow and it's like the cow says. Oh. Yes, yeah. that is the C and say. Okay. educational. The Super Bowl. What's the Super Bowl? It is the it is a, lot of, ball, a rubber ball that bounces real high. That's when kids started winning millions of dollars. <laughs> <laughs> you don't remember all those child millionaires in the sixties? <laughs> Super Bowl. They just okay. blew it all a milkshake <laughs> and please, died. Please, egg creams. <laughs> eggs, yeah. oh. They had a series of egg creams oh. that all died before nineteen seventy one. When Morrison died. Um, <laughs> The Barrel of Monkeys, okay. which yeah. really is it's nothing more, more of a game. That is it? more of a game. I think of his game also. Yeah. So that – Get goodbye. out of here. The Radio Controlled Car. We are so immediately dismissive of I know. things. Like we, yeah. have, we have – I can't to say this enough, Gak. We have to be. Yeah. yeah. I know. Uh, I, I'm going to I'm gonna save my favorite for last. I'm going to go Barbie's Dream House. We've already eliminated Barbie and her the definition yeah. of her dream house. Yeah. Which can't prob- do it. Did it look like the house from Mad Men, I bet? It was I'm sure it was pink cuz all women mm-hmm. dream of a pink house. Yeah. I probably was. I I'm sure I had a some sort of house. I don't know if it was her dream house. Maybe she only had one house, so it must have been the dream house. I feel like she's pretty I, active in the market. She did a lot yeah. of flipping, <laughs> had a lot of rental properties. She flipped Castle Grayskull. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, before she got her dream house, she was in the Barbie that'll do house. <laughs> yeah. Barbie's nightmare duplex. <laughs> Barbie's starter apartment. <laughs> you can't have hot plates in it. Um, okay. We've got the Playmobil, which we talked about before. Those are, those are neat in that they, you get like a giant pirate ship and then a bunch yeah. of pirate Playmobiles. But I was, no we were a Playmobil family. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, they're cool. Mm-hmm. I always thought they were cool toys, but I never had any. I and didn't I either, okay and I, I'm more sentimental about Fisher Price than I am about them. So if they didn't make it, these yeah. guys aren't. Uh, Flatsy doll, which I assume is something that is meant to insult. Is it like a flat Stanley? What is a Flatsy doll? A Does flatsy anybody doll? even know? 
Is it real? I, know, I know what a flat flat-sy. Stanley is. Yeah. So is a flat seat doll like a flat Stanley? You just take it around the world with you and take pictures of yourself with it? Yeah. Is maybe that it's what a flat Stanley is? Oh, yeah. Doll? I was yeah. very worried that it was like a dirty Sanchez or something. <laughs> I really no was flat- like, you guys are very clean. I don't <laughs> like that where this is going. When you work at Disneyland, you are constantly being asked by little kids to take a picture with their flat Stanley. Okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. It's it's fun. It's obviously like, yeah. that doesn't. Yeah, well, flat seat doll though. I don't think those are the same. No, so we're yeah. eliminating flat-sy. it because we don't know what it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Goodbye. You know where Flatsy and uh, Johnny Seven O M A can go hang out. R I P. Yeah, we've got Hot Wheels. Well, yeah. if Matchbox cars didn't make it, Hot Wheels are just the souped up Matchbox cars, right? Yeah. What I would say about I Hot loved Wheels them. Is, well, I know, I don't think I had any, but I'm so angry that the, they did so many commercials that I there I feel as if I owned them. You know what I mean? Like, I can picture so many of them, and I never owned one because there was constantly a commercial for Hot Wheels on. So I blame the advertising agency for that. (laughs) Yeah. Well, yeah. And here's my favorite to come out of the 60s, the light bright. Me too. Oh, yeah. Turn on Me the too. magic of glowing light. The light I need to get a light amazing... bright stat. I can't believe I don't have one. That seems like a, the kind of thing in my home. Once needs. again, an art toy. Yeah. Oh, the Etch-a-Sketch yeah. also is an art toy. The Etch-a-Sketch was which great. Is pretty cool. Yeah, the Etch-a-Sketch. <laughs> you don't like the Etch-a-Sketch? No, no, I just couldn't say it. Uh, the Etch-a-Sketch was wonderful. Yeah, but light bright had a, a Disneyland electrical lights mm-hmm. parade quality yes. that really was very magical. And yeah. talk about a repeat. That was not like, oh, you do it once with one pattern and you're done. Like I remember stacks, stacks of them and being like really sad to have to say goodbye to one in order to switch out and mm-hmm. do a new one. Yeah. I think they're really special. It's a very special toy. It is. It a, is. It's a great thing. And also if like we had to do with Silly Putty and Play-Doh, if we have to pit it head to head against the Etch-A-Sketch, yeah. uh, the light bright makes drawings more beautiful and the Etch-A-Sketch makes drawings more difficult. <laughs> That's right. This is true. Oh, by the way, we talked very briefly about the Main Street Electrical Parade. Mm -hmm. Uh, This is a hot tip for any of you Disneyland people. Uh, The Color the Night Parade, which is the current night parade at Disneyland, Uh is going to Florida to do a run there. And in exchange, the original (gasps) Main Street Electrical Parade is coming home for a limited engagement. So it will be the Baroque Hoedown. It'll be the, the real Elliot the oh. Dragon. The, uh, the, um, the America Dragon. finale. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the, the fireworks finale. Oh, the so big good. light, the big bugs. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's wow. exciting. Wow. So it's wow. coming wow. back. Okay. Wow. I'm really excited about that. And I am not even kidding you. I am going to order a light bright from Amazon yeah. as I leave this podcast. It's All right. really cool. So are we taking the light bright out of the We're 60s? taking the light bright out of the 60s. All right. I can't um, wait for all Over G.I. Joe, yeah, no, guns eliminated. So many people are going to yeah. be mad yeah. of well, all the things we talked about. Yeah. G.I. Joe was one of those toys. If you want to, if you love G.I. Joes, that's where they were born. And they right. were originally that doll. Then the sales died out. Um, after, the, after the Vietnam War really uh, hurt the sales of the G.I. Joe, so he became an explorer. Mm-hmm. And then that that didn't sell well. So eventually those – the smaller – I think they're 8-inch uh, toys or, or 6-inch, whatever they are. The the more traditional G.I. Joes that we grew up with in the 80s came out and had the cartoon designed to help push oh, right, them. Oh, right, right. Mm-hmm. That's Who not never, He never Joe. killed anyone in yeah. the as I recall. Everybody missed. Yeah. I'm impressed that we all settled on Lightbright. I'm pleased because yeah. I looked at this list and I was like, oh, I'm going to have to fight hard for Lightbright. No, Lightbright. I didn't have to at all. We're all here That's with you. That's great. Oh, that's great. Janet, will you read the list from the 1970s? Let's get please? into the 70s. Oh, yeah, the 70s. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to hustle to the 70s. We're going to hustle to the 70s. I guess that was my Bee Gees. Um, okay, we are starting out strong, maybe, with the Nerf ball. The Nerf sure. ball. Weebles. Are those Weebles wobble? They wobble, they don't fall down. Never yeah. had them. Never had them. Paddington Bear. I consider that more of a book that maybe mm-hmm. if you loved the book you would have the doll again yeah. licensed much in the same yeah. way that, that mickey was yeah sure this one never heard of super creeped out baby alive <laughs> i remember commercials for baby, baby alive. alive that's the last thing you hear before somebody slumps down with a knife <laughs> in their back i know exactly <laughs> exactly it is so awful. Oh. <laughs> Baby Alive. So you know what that is, Mark? Uh, no, I just remember the theme song. Uh, oh, and boy. all I remember is those words of the, it's cause it was like a, like a Pavlovian response. Yeah, sure, I just sure. had, uh, cause yeah. I remember hearing Baby Alive. <laughs> it's all I remember. <laughs> so that even is the, the song is threatening. Of what I remember from it. It's oh, a warning. That's amazing. It's a musical warning. Oh, yeah. Okay. So all that's right. a, uh, that's a baby that comes with a monkey's paw. Amazing. Uh, Shrinky Dinks. 
Oh, sure. Mm-hmm. Magna Doodle, which I guess is the little man with the little magnet bits. No, Isn't Magna it, Doodle is different. It's like etch a sketch. It's like not? an etch a sketch or similar to an etch a sketch. It's a drawing. Uh, you're drawing magnetic fibers up with a. Uh, yeah, that's the same as the guy I picture who has a face. The, and the Wooly magnetic, Willy. Yeah, Wooly. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. It's a yeah. similar technology except it's behind a screen. So oh, okay. you make it appear. I don't appear think I ever had one. It was like, a, it was like Wooly Willy and the etch sketch had a child. Right. Okay. Well, I don't approve of that. It's an unnatural. <laughs> yeah. It's unnatural. Uh, Magna Doodle. Okay. Rubik's Cube. That's Ooh. a frustrating puzzle. That's a, yeah. I refuse I to call it a child's toy. I have never successfully done one. Yeah. That's for adults. Yeah. Made by a grown-up for grown-ups. Yeah. It was a, it was a, math, it was a mathematical tool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Initially. There you go. Not that it doesn't show up still all the time. Oh, the it'll ni- never go away. The night of HBO miniseries. The Rubik's Cube? It just Cube? made an appearance. Yeah. I've been watching Stranger Things. As of this recording, uh, we have three episodes to go. You lucky. I have not seen one Rubik's Cube. I think they did a really good job of kind of conjuring more stuff that you're like, oh, I haven't thought about that since, yeah. opposed mm-hmm. to the things that are very ubiquitous when you conjure up the stuff from the 80s. I don't know. I could be wrong. But True. No, I, uh, think I remember thing. thinking that about a lot of stuff and not being like, oh, of course they had to throw in the Rubik's Cube. I like, <laughs> started it yet, but I'm that. so excited too. <laughs> oh, it's so good. So good. Uh, Stretch Armstrong. I never had a Stretch Armstrong. Neither. I like Stretch Armstrong. It was fine. Yeah. Yeah. Just like Plastic Man? It, yeah, it was, it was a, yeah, it was a, Strong man that you, his arms and legs stretched yeah. really far. And it was yeah. real dangerous. And <laughs> you, and you would invariably, if you were playing it with it with your buddies, someone would pull an arm too far, let it go, and yeah. someone get a welt. Yeah. I believe the original one, you could stretch him out and then you either pressed a button or you did, so, there was some device that you attached him to that brought him back to his original shape. Okay. I don't mm-hmm. think he immediately right. snapped back. But snap it, but whether you press a button or not, I would have hurt myself yeah. time and again. It kind of doesn't matter because there's no way he's winning. Yeah, <laughs> there's no right. way he's winning. He's out. Uh, I'll save this one because I suspect that it might be fought for as the number one. Uh, Mattel Classic Football. That means nothing to me. No offense. That was the uh, the switch on the board and the – it was a football game. Oh, okay. That's Papa Matt. It's the, it's the, uh, the handheld. Handheld electronic. Oh, is oh, that what I'm thinking? Well, okay, a, gotcha. I consider that now a video game. So Yeah, mm-hmm. it is. Uh, s- I love Simon. Oh, I, I love, love Simon. Simon. Yeah. But it's more and of a the speak and spell. They're both really good. Although they both were like also like I remember getting really upset once Simon advanced to a certain level where I really mm-hmm. couldn't follow it anymore. <laughs> yeah. I started to feel like I was an idiot. But, but you I were probably at like it. level thirty or I something. Yeah. yeah. You're like, oh, I am no good at this. I can't I'll go back do to my this calculus. Of Twenty seven <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> beeps and boops and lights flashing. And then speak and spell, same thing. Um but I did, that's a real educational tool. Yeah. And then okay, and then we have the Star Trek electronic phasers, which I did not have, but mm-hmm. I would have been excited, I'm sure, if yeah. I'd been in Star Trek. And then the one I left out, which is the Star Wars action figure. And there have been so many action figures and we've talked about these various dolls, but that that was really a big deal. Yeah. Yes. As I mean, it was G.I. Joe sized. It was licensed to the giantest movie thing ever. Yeah. Well, to be um, fair, they they released the smaller figures before G.I. Joe shrunk. Oh, down. did they? Yes. Oh, 19, I did not know. 1978, that. I think, is when the first set came out. It actually they pre-sold it, and they didn't anticipate the demand, so it sold out, and they they couldn't fulfill. So they sent people like a pr- a promise kit, and it came with a stand. For the figures, which is now very, we, we talked about not opening yeah. stuff. Yeah. If you mm-hmm. have one of those and it, it it's still sealed, it is worth an obscene amount of money. Wow. Uh, yeah, I opened all my toys. I but mean, yeah, I would never have not. No. This you would is... have cut its hair and drawn better makeup on Hell it. Hell yeah. yeah, I would have. <laughs> I still collect Kenner Star Wars toys yeah. from when we were kids. Yeah. I only want things that are still in the box Mm -hmm. and figures that are on the card. Mm -hmm. So it takes a very long time to collect because they're Mm -hmm. real expensive. And Mm -hmm. I'm not rich. I I put all my podcasts money to charity. Stop buying old toys that you aren't going to play with. (laughs) Listen, I owe it to society to continue doing this. It is a – no, I didn't have have any then. Really? Um, And it was just one of those things where I feel like it was – the line was drawn like and I I, I wasn't I, I mean Star Wars was I was too young like the first one I saw in the theater and I remember my dad being like all right I hope this isn't too violent for you at your age it was Return of the Jedi so right. I definitely um but I had my dad had friends whose kids had the Star Wars toys I had friends who had them and it always it became very quickly something that only other people had mm-hmm. and I don't know why maybe it was because the demand was so strong right but it, I think for me that was like oh I can't just, I won't, you love it so much, you can't just have like, well, I just have Han and Leia. Mm-hmm. Like, you would want everything. Yes. But now, 
the reason I have to vote for it is because in my home right now, I have a very large, like, you know, above, like, thigh high uh, ad at with a stormtrooper inside in my bedroom. The mm-hmm. Kenner Fully originally? assembled. It's an, it's no, it's like okay. a reissue from you know maybe Hasbro. ten Why years ago. Why did you or hem and haw at the beginning of this episode when we asked if you were a toy person? Well, You're that's like, the well, kind of. I mean, I said, but I, because <laughs> because that's the only thing like that right. I have. It's not like, and then in the other corner I have you know a five Cabbage Patch Kids, and then the corner over right. there I have like a bunch of Matchbox cars. Um, but I do have that, and then I have a Boba Fett that a friend of mine um, lent me because it was like his worry, like his it's his anxiety. We traded anxiety dolls basically Aww. like 10 years ago. We're like, well, That's this great. is the thing that used to make me feel better. And he was like, well, here's my Boba Fett. And so now uh, I have him in a different That's room. That's very sweet. So um, I have only villains. <laughs> can I can I throw a, can I throw a, a wrench into this, though? Sure. Yeah. Do we love the Star Wars toys because we love Star Wars or we do, do we love the Star Wars toys because we love the toys? I mean, I think that's a valid question. But I sure. think that added is real good looking. Like, even if I had never <laughs> yeah. seen anything, I would have gone – what is that? What a wonderful thing this thing is. I guess is it because I we both had – Janet, you and I both had a strong reaction to Simon. Uh, yeah. You two both had a very strong reaction to the Star Wars toys, which and I also hadn't enjoyed. I loved Simon too. I used to think um, – But I also – I didn't have Simon. I had to go over to you, our friend's yeah, house really? to play Simon. Yeah. OK. So for me, I thought if I beat Simon, it would be like the last Starfighter and mm-hmm. the aliens would come down and be like, <laughs> You are the yeah. one who will be our king. Um, but Star Wars toys, Simon was a fad. Okay. Simon went away. Right. The the best toys, a lot of the ones we picked out here, still exist and are popular. And I know Simon has come back and you can buy like original Simon or, or mm-hmm. a different version of it. But the, And that pattern game, it's it's more of a game like Barrels of Monkey. Well, uh, now I do Velocity, not to like give it a free advertisement, but oh, I sure. guess to give it a free one. It's great. And there's there's definitely stuff that basically is Simon that's mm-hmm. just on your iPad yeah. that is a good brain exercise. It really is. Um, it's like a simple – I don't do like video games, but I like right. doing like very simple kind of IQ testy type stuff. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, the idea of it lives on for sure. But, yeah, I mean I, I – is Star Wars going to ma- – Star Wars – I'm fully comfortable with Star Wars yeah. being the one that makes it out of the 70s round. I, well, I'm just looking at the other ones. Also, the I, Nerf if, ball. The Nerf – yeah, I mean, did I really play with a bunch of Nerf balls? I don't think I did. No. We were a – I, I, I had an older them. brother who was a football fanatic, so. Yeah. The foot, I just the didn't the have ball, any. Yeah. And that shouldn't be – I mean, it shouldn't be I can't vote for something just because I didn't have it. I yeah. did not have Star Wars figures. But the fact that I do now and that's still meaningful to me on some level, it feels yeah. weird not to vote for that one. Nerf was a game changer – Certainly, yes. and and continues to be. I'd say that now the Nerf dart stuff is a little more popular than right. like than the Nerf ball. baseball kits or Nerf footballs. because well because right. that sort of fell out yeah. of that's that fell into the public domain. Like every company makes a foam ball. I'll, right, I'll tell you right, what, right. I, let me propose a compromise where we take both Nerf mm-hmm. and Star Wars because Star Wars. Uh, I'm I'm happy to just take no, Star Wars, I, but I think Nerf is also a huge one. I think yeah. I feel comfortable taking both. I'm fine. Right. I'm fine with that too. I can't say that I think even Star Wars is going to win number one, but I don't also know what number one will be from everything we picked. I, uh, I just based on what we've been doing so far, I think I have an idea. Okay, all right. Uh, just based on reactions so far. Okay, that takes us to the '80s. Uh, that takes to the '80s. Uh, there's a time you gotta go and show you're growing now. You know about <laughs> the facts of life. <laughs> That's just the only one that came to my mind. It's perfect. <laughs> Uh, so the toys from the 1980s. I can't believe it took us this long to get to the era when we were the most longest kids. I yeah. know. It's, well. But a lot well, of this stuff made it had, through. It been, yeah. They've been around for decades and decades. Yeah. We weren't getting the brand new toys. So yeah. here is the list from the 1980s. Cabbage Patch Kids. Polly Pocket. The Slap Bracelet. Mm. <laughs> jewelry. Masters of the Universe action figures. <laughs> sure. The Glow Worm. Care Bears. Oh. My Little Pony, Transformers, Teddy Ruxpin, Snoopy Snow Cone Machine, oh. Pound oh. Puppies, The oh. Koosh Ball, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Skip It, Skip Glow it. Stick, and Wrestling Buddy. Hmm. Anything that anything that you can use in a rave. I was about to say, all out. of yeah. these survived in rave form. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, that's hilarious. And there are a lot of these that are that a few of them anyway that function only as action figures from. Assorted cartoon properties. Yeah, yeah. Sure. I mean, we really opened that door when we went on and on. And we on did about like the Star Wars figures, but I mean, look, I 
I definitely wanted Cabbage Patch Kids. I mm-hmm. definitely was like the kid who didn't get it until after everyone else Janet, had one. I'm really concerned. Every iconic toy that we talk about, you're like, well, I didn't have one, but there was one down the <laughs> yeah. street. But I did get one. I just okay. didn't get one when everyone else got one. But <laughs> you got, are you having your childhood late? I'll tell you, yeah. I, I mean, I said, and now I have five. No, when, I don't when have you any. got out of that tan room you were kept in as a child. <laughs> <laughs> just forced to look at the wall. By I the way, was orange by the time I got out. <laughs> There's one missing here from the 70s, which is strawberry shortcake. Oh, that was a 70s thing. Okay. Strawberry shortcake is. Oh, did I not read I that one? Again, well, just did not come through. I didn't didn't see her. Hal, on the I list. just want to let you know. While I didn't have any strawberry shortcake dolls, <laughs> all my friends did, and they would come over and smell their hair like a stalker. Yeah, <laughs> that's what you did. To be fair, their hair though. was scented. Yes, it was. <laughs> just to be clear, everyone. <laughs> You're supposed to smell their hair. It was training you to become I a predator. I might have smelled them a little yeah. too long, yeah. but yeah. <laughs> to become yeah. a predator. Here's a doll. You can smell its hair. <laughs> yeah. You like your pretty doll. Don't you wish you could eat kids? <laughs> when you're an adult, you're going to be that guy on the subway. Yeah. Smelling yeah. hair. <laughs> Collect them all and put them in the strawberry shortcake van. Oh. It doesn't have windows. All right. So what? Uh, I don't know what a Polly Pocket is. Polly Pocket, doll. little tiny I mean, dolls that, uh, that oh, they they would sound, pop open. Oh, that open sounds like something I would really want now. Yes. Mm-hmm. That does fall into the category of yeah. like, does it sound like a cute tiny Japanese toy? I'm yeah. in. Yeah. It's so very kawaii, like a, but yeah, yeah. American style. It sounds style. like I would love that. A slot I mean, bracelet. Listen, I agree with you. Jewelry. jewelry. Yeah. Masters of the Universe action figures. I had She-Ra. Yeah, I had sure. the they were, they were great. Yeah. Princess of um, Power. Yeah. Yeah. But again, we've opened up this door, and I feel like maybe it's a good idea to take all of the – all of the – Action figure yeah. and toys that are licensed from stories that yeah. we love. Yeah. Although, and choose maybe one or two to come. Because, yeah. well, that is going to include My Little Pony and yeah. Masters and, of the Universe and Care Bears. Well, now that and, said, I don't remember there being a My Little Pony show until after there was a yeah. My Little Pony oh, that doll. I think that shows. one was backwards. Exactly. Oh. Uh, and Transformers as well. Care Bears, I'm not sure about. Toys. But yeah. Right. I think Care Bears as well. I think the, they Care were. Care Bears were first and then they did a show. Yeah, they figured out. Someone I think realized. From Star Wars. I'm sure. I think Star Wars sort of helped kick that off. I'm because sure you're right. A, a film. Let them sell a lot of toys. So they were like, "All right, let's come up with a show about uh, robots that, that yeah. switch," which is a Japanese thing. But the toys were Japanese initially, mm-hmm. and the Japanese. It's uh, interesting. If you can find original Japanese Transformers in the box, oh god, I, you can retire. Yeah, you can be a child millionaire. <laughs> get as many egg creams as you want. Creepy. Um, <laughs> I did have My Little Ponies, but I loved more than my My Little Ponies the mermaids that you could take into the bathtub. That's a oh, real. I, that's. I don't know these. Uh, no. They, uh, they, the same, I mean, same principle, right? Brightly colored hair mm-hmm. yeah. on a plastic doll uh, that you could brush. But the mermaids, you can take in the bath and you can swim them around. And there was a bunch of different ones. I I wish they were on here because I for sure wanted to be a mermaid. And then Splash made it even worse. Um, <laughs> made that oh, hunger, remake coming out. Hunger. It's going to be so fun. I know. That's a fun idea. Yeah. That's a fun idea. Uh, so uh, even though I did have My Little Ponies, I, I got to take it off the list for me because the mermaids are not on here and mm. I love them more. Pound puppies, oh, so you're taking them off out of spite. Yeah, yeah that's right. Okay. Uh, pound puppies, again, a thing everyone else had. I did Same not here. have. Now, did not have them. you know what I did have and I cherished and I associate very strongly with like a thing that got me through hard times was oh, a glow worm. Okay. I loved my glow worm. I, that glow worm was like the parents I never had. Yes. Um, I was jealous of any kid. I didn't. I did not. Sure, have a glow you worm. roll over in the middle of the night and clock yourself in the face who with cares? that plastic head. Glowworm was a. Glow. For those who don't know, oh. glowworm was. You can still get glowworms. I'm sure. A, yeah. a, a plush flashlight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was. Yeah. Yeah. It was worm. about the. It was a, a little. It looked like a little papoose. Yeah. With yeah. a uh, with a pla- They hard did a good job head. on the face. It wasn't super yeah. creepy. Kind of yeah. looked adorable. like the Cheerios honeybee, like honey mm-hmm. on Cheerios honeybee. Yeah. Kind of. I have a. I have a terrible association with the glowworm. Because when I was a kid, One I don't know if I ever to told you. this story on the show. Uh, when I was a kid, my, my brother and I were fighting and, um, we were, we were real little, maybe four and five. My brother and I are fighting and my dad overhears us fighting, comes in the room and he's going to stop this fight and he goes, Hey, you two quit fighting. Get over here right now. And he picks up a glowworm off the floor and he's gesturing with this <laughs> glowworm. Oh, and he goes, no. and he goes, you two, Quit fighting. You know what I want you to do? I want you to stand. You stand here and you stand here. Had us about three feet apart, standing, facing each other, my brother and I. And he goes, I want you boys. He goes, you don't always have to like each other, but you always have to love each other. I want you to shake hands. We very reluctantly reached out and shook hands. And when we reached out to shake hands, my dad took the glowworm and went, thwap, thwap, and quit fighting right in our stomachs. 
It's the only time I ever got hit. And we were both like, oh, point taken. So Dad. this is a weapon in your it's mind. It's a weapon in my it mind. It's a weapon. Yeah. Oh, the glowworm. Yeah, the glowworm is a weapon in my mind. But I love the glowworm. Care Bears, Still. I didn't. Care Bears. Care Bears, I was the right age for, yet I was too good for them. Yeah. The yeah Care Bears, fine, I was whatever. like, ugh, give me some edge. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, there's yeah. already a grumpy, and he's one of the seven dwarfs from the yeah. 30s. Do something <laughs> new. They solved all of their problems by standing in a line and holding hands. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> the solution to everything. Ugh. Hippies. Um, well, Transformers. Transformers that was, are an I, incredible toy. I did not ever have one, but yes. I think I respect the design very much. And they were they they combined the best parts of an action figure and a puzzle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it, it's something that you reach an age at which you can no longer do it. Like you know, they have mm. those those whistles that only kids can hear. Mm-hmm. And then like once you turn twenty one, <laughs> like a dexterity, yeah, you lose a certain. You can't hear it yeah. anymore. Yeah. When you when you become a certain age, you can no longer change the trans. I have transformers oh. from my youth that I found yeah. last time I was home in Philadelphia, and I could not transform them anymore. It but like if I you handed forgot. it to a nine year old who had never seen it before, right. he would be able to yeah. do it in ten seconds. I felt magic. like Doctor Strange after the car accident. Yeah. I was like, I can no longer perform surgery. Their magic um, stopped working. The Teddy Ruxpin. Did you guys ever have a Teddy Ruxpin? No. No, they're they're creepy. I Teddy thought it was Ruxpin, too sophisticated. I was like, go back to Chuck E. Cheese where you belong. Uh, <laughs> the only reason I mention loving the Teddy Ruxpin is because we, uh, my brother had a uh, had two cassettes that we put into the Teddy Ruxpin that we really shouldn't have. I like uh, this. One of them was Tone Loke. <laughs> and uh, and the other was Guns N' Roses Appetite for Destruction. Yeah, that'll do it. That'll so we put those it. cassettes. And uh, Teddy Ruxpin is a cassette player where it, in the back of a teddy bear. And when uh, the music plays, the teddy bear's mouth moves. And his eyes open and close. Yeah. It's basically yeah. a, a teddy bear shape. The fact that you were player. able to yeah. hack that, I do have to give you major <laughs> kudos for. Uh, what else? Snoopy Snowco Machine. Listen, I didn't have one. No, it's like the <laughs> Easy Bake Oven. It's, a, it's an appliance. <laughs> Yeah, I yeah. mean, I didn't have an Easy Bake Oven. I didn't have any of that stuff. No. Pound Puppy, I covered. Did you guys have Pound Puppies? I had a Pound Puppy. No, I wrinkles. Just, yeah. I just, uh, I just had a dead dog. <laughs> <laughs> Carry around. Uh, well, that's yours. Lucky because yours was much bigger. I'm sure than a Pound Puppy. Um, I worked me out. That's for sure. Yeah, a Skip It. That's the thing that looks like the Olympic hammer, right? Where you put it on your ankle. Yeah, and it goes. around. And then your, you spin it around your foot and dumb. you jump over it. So I don't. Dumb. I don't really know what they're that trying is. to replace a the Koosh jumper. ball. Oh yeah, the Koosh ball. Koosh the Koosh ball is great, but that's more of a toy of the '90s. Yeah, that feels Ro- like a Rosie fad. O'Donnell yeah. really like helped make it yeah. really prominent. It just. It existed in the – it's the same thing with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Those toys came out in like 88, 89. Yeah. They mm-hmm. were really big in like 90, 91, I've 92. never – I never watched even one version of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. They were so fun. I, I It was – I liked the original version and then it kept going and I feel like I grew out of it. Yeah. yeah. I love – I mean I totally get that people love them. I just yeah. – I don't have that as like positive – Childhood association. What about, you know. what about Cabbage Patch Kids that all came from a garden somewhere in the wilderness With their of Georgia? Butt signed yeah. by a person, Xavier yeah. Roberts. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, and you adopted them. You yeah. didn't just take one home. Oh, that, no, that was it. Was ingenious in that there was like paperwork that had to be signed. Yeah. <laughs> like they made bureaucracy important. Which and I'm sure that the the employee at KB Toys was yeah. really excited about. And they were like, oh great. Hold on everybody. I have to hold yeah. up the line where, while a kid tries to fill out a form. Yeah. But I yeah, I did end up with uh, I think in the end I had three. Like yeah. making up for lost time. I sure. got greedy and ended up with three because no one wanted them anymore and it was like, oh now they're affordable. Yeah. I had one Cabbage Patch Kids doll and a thousand Garbage, garbage Pail, Pail Kids, kids cards. Stickers. Yeah. Those cards, they They're should the be on here. Yeah. Let's face it. Garbage Pail Kids. That's, that was ingenious. So what's coming out of the 80s? Garbage Pail Kids? <laughs> <I> <laughs> not, mean... on the, not on this list, but I want to mention it because I know mm-hmm. you love Boglins and I did too. I love That was Boglins. another toy of the 80s. They were yeah. rubber puppets of little creepy looking like swamp monsters. They yeah. came in cages. Mm-hmm. So you you uh the it was a cardboard box that looked like a cage with a plastic uh, set of bars that you could slide up to remove it and also a hole cut out of the bottom so you could work the puppet and the eyes glowed in the dark. Yeah, they but were not uh, going to win. They were no, they were but they were like they were like um f- uh Peter Jackson uh yeah. Peter Jackson oh, yeah. kind of puppets like yeah. gross and rubbery uh-huh. yeah, they yeah. yeah. They look like mad balls were sorted like it was that yep. era of like exactly. okay. toys. Yes, yes, I totally know what you're talking about now. All right. All right. So I what mean, are we taking out of here? I feel like I don't know uh I will defer to our guest. No, but I mine is so my love of the glowworm is so personal over like personal trauma as a mm-hmm. child. I don't know if that's appropriate, but I also feel like I couldn't look one in the eye if I didn't take it with me to the mm-hmm. finals. But I don't know that that's that it's that 
iconic. It just, it's well, just, it was just very important for me. We will defer to you as our guest, but if it makes it to the finals, it will get eliminated because I was beaten with it. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> that should cancel it out. Um, no, it's, uh, I, I, I mean, I would. I mean, uh, was trans. So you're saying Transformers was not a show first; it was a toy first. A toy I think Transformers sold are, by a show. That's pretty, pretty spectacular. Sp- it's yeah. an amazing feat. Yeah. Uh, I'll go with Transformers. I'm not afraid. All right, all right. I love you should. Glowworm. Oh, I'm so sorry. Glowworm, I love you so much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Right. I love you too. So Transformers, Jenna, Transformers is coming out of. <laughs> I'm finally grown up. Uh, Welcome to adulthood. Uh, I can't join you. Uh, I'm going back into the cornfield. Uh, oh. <laughs> to, eat, to eat corn to some farmer's dismay. <laughs> I'm going to destroy uh, these crops. I'm, I'm going to go back to my cave in New Zealand. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hanging from the ceiling. That's well, very important to a certain people. Oh, that's right. We did all go actually see yeah. real glowworms. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. Oh, bad that brought you back glow. around. It really did. Uh, Too bad. It's going to die up in that cave. <laughs> yeah. Just crapping light like they do. Uh, all right. The 90s. We've got uh, Funky Comadina. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 We've got the Little Tykes Log Cabin. Never Little heard Tykes of it? Cozy Coop Car, which never are those like kid sized cars you could pedal around in. Uh, that, that if you go to. Well, what about Big Wheels? Yeah. That's vehicle. not on here. It's, I, th- oh, I feel vehicle. like that's like a vi- that's, that's a, a vehicle. Conveyance. I mean, that's what kids would take to get to yeah. work. Yeah. <laughs> uh, super soakers. Anything you have to get a registration and a title for. <laughs> now, okay, hold on here. Super soakers. We have Beanie Babies, which mm-hmm. felt like something adults collected. Also, Beanie kids. Babies and Pound Puppies are from the same that same company, Ty. Yes. Beanie Babies, which they figured out like make them smaller. Let's make this thing smaller. <laughs> And f- rare on some level so that everyone feels it's important uh, to have them. Each one was only made like a certain number of them. Yeah, which made it them made me valuable. angry. It yeah. made me angry because it was a, clearly a marketing tool. Uh, mm. Buzz Lightyear. That is, is from a movie. Cannot, cannot from accept a movie. it. Um, Even though we totally accepted Star Wars. Cause that, but, yeah, well, but the Buzz Lightyear was like a uh, – Yeah, people don't – When you make – it, yeah. The but American not, Girl yeah. doll. <laughs> The creepy, which made dolls, uh, which made dolls that were realistic, way too expensive, and created a whole experience. I mean, yeah. in here at the Third Street, not the Third Street Promenade, the Farmers Market the in L.A., the yeah. Grove, there is a, a two or three floor yeah. American Girl. I went in there once because yeah. I thought well, I got to go in and see what's what. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, it's a hundred dollars for yeah. a doll. There is a styling salon where you get the hair done. Uh, there is a hospital if your doll is broken. There's a tea room where you can go and have tea with your doll. Yeah. And uh there's a vault where parents can just throw all their money in <laughs> yeah. so their kids can get a doll that vaguely looks like Marie Curie. <laughs> yeah, it's it's uh it's a useless privilege toy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, tickle me Elmo. Oh, very cool. So he giggles when you tickle him. He he I giggles and he goes, <laughs> Please like don't ever do that. Again. <laughs> I worked at a at a PBS store, a store of knowledge, oh. the WHYY store of knowledge in Willow Grove, Pennsylvania. And Charming. we had Tickle Me Elmo dolls that disappeared immediately. That was like a 97, I think. They yeah. were the hottest toy on the planet. I, I can't allow them because I, I had a Grover and a Kermit doll and I mm. they're not on here and they were really, really important to yeah. me. And it just feels like that goes into the sort of like yeah. you love them because you love Sesame Street and the right. Muppets, I guess. Yeah. That's that. Yeah, that's the if if your love isn't just for the toy itself. Yeah. Yeah. This is tough, man. This, right. I'm telling you, we only have a couple left, and I'm unimpressed. There, yeah, there are two more. One is the Furby, which is which is of the devil. Yeah. There is yeah. one at my <laughs> office that I keep in a that somebody uh, brought it in because their kid couldn't deal with it anymore and left it on my desk. I put it in a cabinet. And every once in a while, I have to go in that cabinet to get something, and then it wakes up, and it ju- you just hear like, <laughs> uh. I, they're, they're the worst. And then there's the neodymium uh. magnet toy. Here's what What's I'm going to say. What is the neodymium magnet toy? It's probably something that uh, Lex Luthor used to try and kill Superman. <laughs> I mean, seriously. Uh, here's what I would propose. If this is best classic toy, mm-hmm. I don't think we need any of these from the 90s because, frankly, they suck. Yeah. Well, I, we I would like to give a shout out to the Super Soaker. That was the water gun game changer. Yeah. And if you were the kid with a Super Soaker at the pool party, you won the water gun fight. Listen, Which, to me, is the reason to discount it because it feels like it yeah. unfairly stacks the deck. <laughs> if you thought – It you creates thought, bullies. Yeah. Yeah, it, that's true. If you ever thought – Rich you, bullies. <laughs> if you ever thought you couldn't put somebody's eye out with a stream of water, <laughs> we've got a great – Great toy for you, it's a yeah. Super Soaker. 
Uh, so I'm gonna li- I'm gonna eliminate all the 90s all right. and the 2000s, wow. of which we only have three. Sorry, Brett. Sorry, Mindflex, and sorry, Juju. I yeah. don't know what Juju is. I don't know what Mindflex is, and I know I hate brats. Yep. Yeah. We get that they're popular. I hate These brats with an S toys. and a Z. <laughs> Something that's like 16 years old worse? is not classic. Oh, I yeah. do like yeah. bratwurst. Well, You're right. We can put that I in. I like beer brats. <laughs> it's like a Mr. Potato Head, but with, with bratwurst. <laughs> All right, you guys. Right now, I would like to uh, – can I read off – do our it. final yeah, list. Yeah, let's read off the finals. That we are. This is. These are our finalists from the earliest to the latest. Yo-Yo, Viewmaster, Legos, Play-Doh, Light Bright, Nerf Ball, Star Wars action figures, Kenner only, and Transformers. <laughs> okay, I would. Pro- I would propose mm-hmm. that we go around one at a time and eliminate them. Okay. Okay. And each eliminate one. So I will start, and I will eliminate Play-Doh. Okay. Plato, you're gone. I will go next and I will eliminate Transformers. While they are wonderful, oh. we're picking a classic. Yeah, and Plato's great, but it also would turn into rocks after a certain yeah. mu- You had to like know well, some secret out. recipe. Like <laughs> you put it in the microwave with a pinch of salt <laughs> and emodium concentrate. Actually, what you just said makes sense. Emodium <laughs> concentrate work. so Except it doesn't get diarrhea. diarrhea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what you give to your child after yeah. they eat too much Plato. <laughs> <laughs> Also, uh, you, I don't know if you've heard an episode where we do this elimination thing, but we always apologize to the thing that we are eliminating. Yeah. Look, I'm real sorry. I know. <laughs> it's it just like happens. a person. I know. I'm, I tried to just I'm get rid of it. I'm happy to apologize. Yeah, okay. I'm ha- yeah. always happy to apologize okay, unduly. I want to get rid of the Nerf ball, you guys. Then it's gone. Okay. Sorry. Nerf. Bring. Hello. <laughs> hi, Nerf. It's me. Um, hi, Janet. Nerf, I'm so sorry to have to do this, but I'm cutting you from our list. Okay. Oh my god, did it, did Nerf just kill himself? I'm not sure. <laughs> but the show must go on. Click. I forgot to hang up the phone. <laughs> oh jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, yo-yo residents. <laughs> Hi, um, may I speak with the yo-yo? This is the yo-yo. Are oh, you hey. the yo-yo decision maker of the house? Are you the head yo-yo in your house? Yes, I am. I'm Cornelius von <laughs> Yo-Yo, the patriarch of the yo-yo family. Ew, now I know they're bougie. <laughs> I have some terrible news for you. What's that? Have my stocks fallen because I'm terribly rich? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm here to tell you, you are not going to be the best classic toy. But I can be made to walk the dog and <laughs> fall asleep. Shut up, yo-yo. Click. Three hours later. <laughs> and the 48 thing. <laughs> Click. Goodbye. Yo-yos. Uh, Sorry. Okay. This is the Viewmaster. <laughs> uh, hi, uh, Viewmaster. Um, yes, what is it, Mark? Oh, God, We've terrible. been friends for a long time. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, but I realized that while I have an affinity for you, many people might see you just as six 3D pictures. Uh, and I, 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 I really love you, Viewmaster, but I've got to eliminate you. I totally understand. <laughs> that is not the reaction I expected, Viewmaster. Uh, thank you for being so understanding. I will kill your family. Wait, what did you just say? Nothing. Okay, bye, Viewmaster. <laughs> That was one of Satan's greatest inventions, <laughs> if you master. <laughs> oh, God, that killed me. Okay, uh, so we have three left. We do. Guys, just to um, remind you uh, how angry you already are about all the things we've eliminated and how angry you're about to be, we are left with Legos, Lightbright, and the Star Wars action figure. <sighs> this is really hard. <laughs> Uh, hello, this is George Lucas. <laughs> <laughs> hi, George. Oh, hi, Janet. Uh, how are you? Um, I'm good. How are you? Oh, I don't like uh, talking to people very much, so I kind of wish I hadn't answered the phone. Uh, listen, George, I I feel like your Star Wars action figures were a game changer. They're a life changer. But because we have so many different action figures that are so important to so many people... And because a lot of this just has to do with how brilliant you were of a merchandiser, I'm going to get rid of Star Wars action figures from our list. Uh, that really doesn't affect me at all. Um, I'm really doing fine. Again, I do wish I wouldn't have picked up. Okay, thanks, George. Bye-bye. Click. 
I mean, that was tough. That, that was. was tough. That was really tough. Oh, the ultimate decision. Ring, 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 ring. Hello, this is Wipe Right. Yeah, can you hold on for a second? I'm going to make a three way call if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah, fine. Ring, ring. Hello. Ring, ring. Hello. Oh, hey. <laughs> uh, are these the Lego twins? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, great. Uh, I'm going to patch you in with the Light Bright. Okay. Oh, oh, hey, hey Light Bright. Light Bright. Oh, LB. Friends. Hey, what's up, how LB? You doing, guys? I'm just sitting here glowing right now. I'm a potted plant. Oh. Uh, guys, I'm glad you're all here because we've been talking about classic toys for a little while now, and it's time for us to make our final decision. It's down to the two of you. Oh, oh that's great. So I'm going to make my declaration now, if you're ready. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sure. Okay. People of the world, for years and years, beyond the 20s, way back in time to all the places I visited. Yes, I was born in the future, but I visited all times because that's what our technology allows. So many different toys have, have been a part of our lives, of our parents, our siblings, of our grandparents. Think of the toys your children will have in the future. What's going to be classic to them? Probably not brats. Those things are just scary. I think one of them might have already had taken my wallet last time I was at a Target. But the point is, when we look at the pantheon of classic toys, only one of the two of you can be declared the champion. And it's a system of interconnecting bricks that was invented in Denmark and has become not just a toy for children with great imaginations, but a form of art and a form of expression for all of us. That's right. Legos are the best classic toy. Asked and answered. <laughs> Janet Farney. Oh my gosh, you guys. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you Joining so much. I feel like we did so good work. much fun. I feel real. It was very hard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, that was, that's a, that's a very personal category. I mm-hmm. know there are a lot of really angry people out there, but I think when you step back <laughs> and you look at the big picture, you'll see that Legos, are kind of unbeatable. You yeah. might be our, you but, might be angry yeah. with our silver and bronze medalists, That's but right. I don't think anyone can argue with our gold medalists yeah. in this and case. Yeah, and guys, I am going to order a light bright. Am I going to yeah. order Legos when I get out of here? No. I fully am going to order a light bright. I might. Tell everybody, <laughs> um, you host a great podcast called the JV Club, Thanks. which we both, both have been on. Both of these boys, uh, have been boys of summer. It's called yeah. the JV Club. It's on the Nerdist Network. Um, it is a podcast about, uh, people that you love's teenage years. Often they were very awkward and uncomfortable, which I think is delightful and charming and makes you fall in love with them even more than you already were. Um, yeah. And then uh, the other thing I would just plug is um, in October on Halloween, uh, there's a sneak kind of premiere of this IFC show that I'm on called Stand Against Evil. It was created by one of the writers of The Simpsons, Dana Gould, an amazing stand up his own right. And it's John C. McGinley and me. And Deborah Baker Jr. and Nate Mooney basically fighting demons in a small town in a comedic manner. That's awesome. So I'm that so out. excited IFC. about this show. Can't I didn't know that John C. McGinley was on this show. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. plays sort of an Archie Bunker character oh, that I have so to good. contend with. Not yeah. that you weren't reason enough to watch. No, yeah. listen. Uh, he's fantastic. He's so great on the show. Um, well, we're very excited about the show. We're very excited to have you. Uh, tell people your Twitter handle. Did you tell me it's your just handle? at Janet Varney. Great. And thank you for joining us today. This was yes. so much fun. and What a pleasure and a Fun joy, to get guys. nostalgic. We have fun jobs. We uh, do. We do. Yeah. I love it. Uh, there are many other topics for us to discuss on this show, so please reach out to us on Twitter at We Got This Tweets or check out our Maximum Fun subreddit. There is probably a flame war happening right now. You can suggest a topic on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash We Got This Podcast or email us at We Got This Podcast at gmail.com. Thank you, Colin Anderson, our guest producer Yay! on the board. Thank you to our normal producer, Ken Plume, to our researcher, Kate McManus. Yay! Graphic designer, Uri Kelman. Yay! And QA engineer, Jen Alva. Yay! Thank you, as always, to our musicians, Mike Furman and Jonathan Dinerstein, for our award-winning theme song and score, respectively. Yay! And thank you, as always, to you, our listeners. We wouldn't do this without you. We couldn't do this without you. Thanks for giving us an opportunity to sit with our dear friend Janet and talk about things that we love. For Hal Lublin, I'm Mark Gagliardi. For Mark Gagliardi, I'm Hal Lublin. And don't worry, everybody. (laughs) We We got got this. this. We got this. Maximumfun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported.